bet kindergartners don't know this, that I was born in another country. I was born very far away from the United States. I was born in Russia. And Russia is halfway across the globe. It is in two continents. So this is the map of Russia, and it is located in two continents. One is Europe. This is where my home is. I'm from the European part of Russia. And then the other one is Asia. Asia is a very large continent, and countries like China and Japan are in that continent too. Russia is the largest country in the world. I think it's twice as big as the United States, and the United States is a big country, so imagine how huge Russia is. The capital of Russia is Moscow. Say, Moscow. Moscow. In Russian, it sounds different. It sounds Moskva. Say, Moskva. Moskva. Here you go. See, you can speak in Russian now. And on this picture, you see something that's called the Kremlin. This is the heart of Moscow, as we say in Russia. It is a fortress that was built a very long time ago. And this fortress looks like a triangle. And it's in, in the middle of Moscow, in the middle of our capital. And it used to be just, Moscow used to be just that triangle. So everybody who lived in Moscow lived in that triangle. And that fortress protected people from enemies who wanted to invade the city. And then Moscow grew with years, and now it's a huge city, kind of like New York in the United States. But the heart of Moscow is still in the Kremlin. This is where the Russian president works, and where the a Russian government works and lots of decisions are made, but this is also a place where people go to see different historic buildings. There are several cathedrals, cathedrals on the territory of the Kremlin. There are several museums where you can see lots of Russian history, lots of beautiful paintings, art pieces, um, jewelry that are so expensive that nobody can afford them. Lots and lots of fun things to see inside this place. This is the place that you probably have seen on pictures and will recognize. This is St. Basil's Cathedral, okay? And it used to be, it used to be a monastery and now it is a museum where anybody can go inside and see it. And it's, it's a historic building. It's a beautiful art piece. And Russia is famous for it. So if you see different places that are people recognize around the world, like the Eiffel Tower, you know, um, for Russia, that's St. Basil's Cathedral. Many of you probably have seen this movie, Anastasia. In Russian, it's Anastasia. This movie is about a princess, a Russian princess. And it's actually based on a true person. The movie is not true itself, but it's based on the true person who lived in this building. Russia used to have czars, or you can say kings or queens. In Russian, they are czars and czarinas. And so the very last czar, his name was Nicholas, he lived in this building with his family. And they lived there until 1917. He had a big family, and Anastasia was one of his daughters. So that's the picture of the czar, his wife, and his children. He had four daughters and one son. 
they have, if you're interested in finding out more about them, they have a very tragic history. But I'm not gonna talk too much about it today. We're going to move on and focus on other symbols of Russia. This is the Russian flag. It's very simple. And what it means, there are three colors. So white means freedom, okay? Blue means blue sky or peaceful times, peace in the country. And red represents blood. So it represents all the people, all the soldiers, the heroes who fought for Russia and they fought for freedom and peace in the country. So this is the meaning of the Russian flag. You probably recognize these items. They're called matryoshkas. They're, yep, we can say it together, matryoshkas. Very good. They are Russian wooden dolls that are painted and there can be many, many of them. They carve them out of a big piece of wood and then carve smaller pieces and smaller pieces. And some of them can be so tiny that you can hardly see them. And they are all stacked inside. So you open them up and then there's another one and another one and another one. So it used to be a toy for Russian children. When kids did not have many toys to play with, they didn't have any Legos or uh, American dolls or um, whatever else you like to play with. So Russian children played with matryoshkas. Those were their dolls. And now it is a piece of art. It's a souvenir that when people go to Russia, they like to buy them and bring them home and look at them because it reminds them of Russia. I have several of them in my house and in my office. I think some of you have seen them. Okay, this is a very unique Russian instrument. It's called balalaika. Actually, when you walked in and there was a song, it's called kalinka. I think Miss Stevens actually, the kids, the song with you in your class, right? I, the older kids, I heard them, yes. So they use this instrument in that song. It, it's very unique, it has a unique sound, it kind of looks like a guitar, but it, it doesn't sound like a guitar. This is what's called Fabergé eggs, okay? So Fabergé is the last name of a very talented artist who lived in Russia, okay? He was not born in Russia, but he lived in Russia for the longest time. And he worked for the Tsar of Russia and made a lot of eggs and other art pieces for his family, jewelry. So why they're so unique, There's not, there hasn't been anything like this before he, Fabergé, created these eggs. And so what they are, they're made out of precious metals and precious jewels. So they're made out of gold and silver and uh, diamonds and, I don't know, sapphires and rubies and any kind of precious gems you can think of. And so you can open them up, every egg opens up, and then inside it, there is something special. So this egg, as you can see, has a building inside of it, okay? It's a Russian, um, Russian building, Russian palace. Then some of them have animals inside of them. Some of them have maybe beautiful flowers or trees. And so you open it up and it's a little surprise. So the czar, or the Russian king, right? For every Easter, he bought an egg for his wife to surprise her. And this egg had something special in it. Some eggs have actually the Russian family in it, in them, with little pictures of the Tsar, the Tsarina, the children. So it's a, it's a very unique art, and it's famous all over the world, and these eggs are extremely expensive. Extremely expensive. Some of them probably are priceless. 
This is another symbol of Russia, and it is samovar. And samovar um, is like a teapot. So people would heat up water, hot water, and have tea together. So not many people use samovars now. It's more um, like a decorative item, but Russians love to drink tea. They drink tea all day long. They start in the morning with tea and go to bed with tea. And when people come to visit each other, when friends come to see you, it's expected that you offer them tea. If you don't, it's rude. So when you go see somebody, the, the person will say, oh, let's have some tea. And you'll say, yes, let's have some tea. Because if you say, no, I don't want any, then you are rude too. So everybody drinks tea. These are some examples of Russian food. Russian food is maybe not as unique as Mexican food or, um, I don't know, Indian food or some other kinds of food. It's very um, comforting food, okay? So when you think about mashed potatoes and gravy, biscuits and gravy, when you think of pizza, it seems comforting, right, to American people? Well, in Russia, uh, most of Russian food is kind of like that, comfort food. So you can see here on the first picture, uh, there are blinis. In Russian it's blini. Say blini. Blini. Okay. They are Russian pancakes. They're very thin. They're more like French crepes, if any of you adults probably know what they are. Um, so they, are, they can be sweet or savory. You can have them with sweet things like syrup, or you can have them with caviar. And caviar, um, well, it's fish eggs. And they're very really good, I think. But somebody probably don't think so. Okay, I'm moving on. The next one is borscht. Borscht is Russian food. And it has some unusual ingredients in it too, like beets that Americans don't eat a lot of, but beets are very tasty and they're good for us. And then pierogi. Pierogi would be kind of like runzas, and they can be filled with sweet or savory uh, things. They, they can have berries inside, they can have um, cabbage, meat, um, well, lots of things. You can, you can put anything. In Russia, there are so many varieties that you'll probably not know what to choose from the assortment. They're very good. And then Russian dumplings are called pilmeni. Say pilmeni. Okay. I know at least one person in here who had pilmeni. Ben had pilmeni before, right Ben? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Um, they have meat inside. There are small dumplings and they have meat inside. And they're very good. All right. This is what Russian students look like. They wear uniforms. Boys and girls wear uniforms to school. And then you see they have flowers. So on the first day of school and on the very last day of school, every student brings flowers to their teachers. I think it's a very, very special tradition that keeps going. It was a tradition when I went to school and my uh, nephews and nieces go to school now and they still follow this tradition. On the very first day of school, Russian kids start school on September 1st, always. Unless it's a Sunday, then it's September 2nd. But September 1st is a day of knowledge in Russia and kids go to school and it's a big celebration because it's an opportunity for kids to learn and learning is important for kids. And I think bringing flowers to teachers is an amazing thing. It makes their day. And your teachers love you and they teach you so many important things in life. So it's a cool tradition, I think. All right, some sports, Russian sports that are popular in Russia. Figure skating. So I used to 
to figure skate when I was little. But what are you more? Not with a boy, just by myself. But <laughs> some skate with boys and girls, some skate by themselves. Tennis is very popular in Russia. Lots of boys and girls play tennis. Soccer is very popular. Boys and girls play soccer in the streets when they go home, they practice in their... Most, most kids live in apartment buildings, not in, in houses like, like you guys live. Um, so when they go outside, they play um, on a playground that's like apartment building playground. So lots of kids play together, and this is one of the things that they do together, play soccer. Okay, volleyball is very popular. Even boys play volleyball. And actually, the team from the city where I come, come from, it's called Belgorod. Say Belgorod. Belgorod. In my city, the volleyball team, boys volleyball team, is the best in the country. They even participate in Olympic Games. That's how good they are. All right, some animals in Russia. Caribou, yes. They come from Russia. Brown bears. They're native to Russia. Siberian tigers. I've, I've seen Siberian tigers in Omaha at the zoo. Yes, some of you have been to the zoo. So next time you go, Search for Siberian tigers there. They're cool. Oh, look at this. Say it. Alphabet. Yep, that's a Russian alphabet. Okay? And Russian alphabet has 33 letters. How many letters? 33. Okay, how many letters does the American, the English alphabet have? 26. 26. Good job. Wonderful. Okay. So how many does the Russian alphabet have? 33. 33. Thank you for paying attention. Do you want me to say it to you? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 